Chapter Eleven of A Tangled Tale. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Avai in October two thousand and nine. A Tangled Tale by Lewis Carroll. Chapter Eleven. Appendix. A knot," said Alice. "Oh, do let me help to undo it." Answers to Knot One. Problem. Two travellers spend from three o'clock till nine in walking along a level road, up a hill, and home again, their pace on the level being four miles an hour, uphill three, and downhill six. Find distance walked, also, within half an hour, time of reaching top of hill. Answer. Twenty-four miles, half past six. Solution. A level mile takes a quarter of an hour, uphill one-third, downhill one-sixth. Hence, to go and return over the same mile, whether on the level or on the hillside, takes half an hour. Hence, in six hours, they went twelve miles out and twelve back. If the twelve miles out had been nearly all level, they would have taken a little over three hours if nearly all uphill a little under four hence three and a half hours must be within one half an hour of the time taken in reaching the peak thus as they started at three they got there within half an hour of half past six twenty-seven answers have come in of these nine are right sixteen partially right and two wrong the sixteen give the distance correctly, but they have failed to grasp the fact that the top of the hill might have been reached at any moment between six o'clock and seven. The two wrong answers are from Gertie Vernon and a nihilist. The former makes the distance twenty-three miles, while her revolutionary companion puts it at twenty-seven. Gertie Vernon says they had to go four miles along the plain and got to the foot of the hill at four o'clock. They might have done so, I grant, but you have no ground for saying they did so. It was seven and a half miles to the top of the hill, and they reached that at a quarter before seven o'clock. Here you go wrong in your arithmetic, and I must, however reluctantly, bid you farewell. Seven and a half miles at three miles an hour would not require two hours and three quarters. A nihilist says, let x denote the whole number of miles y the number of hours to hilltop therefore three y equals the number of miles to hilltop and x minus three y equals the number of miles on the other side you bewilder me the other side of what of the hill you say but then how did they get home again however to accommodate your views we will build a new hostelry at the foot of the hill on the opposite side and also assume what i grant you is possible though it is not necessarily true that there was no level road at all even then you go wrong you say one y equals six minus the quantity x minus three y divided by six two x over four and a half equals six i grant you one but i deny two it rests on the assumption that to go part of the time at three miles an hour and the rest at six miles an hour comes to the same result as going the whole time at four and a half miles an hour but this would only be true if the part were an exact half that is if they went uphill for three hours and downhill for the other three, which they certainly did not do. The sixteen who are partially right are Agnes Bailey, F. K., Fifi, G. E. B., H. P., Kit, M. E. T., Mysey, a mother's son, Nairam, a Red Ruthian, a socialist, Spear Maiden, T. B. C., Bis Inertiae, and yak of these f k fifi t b c and vis inertiae do not attempt the second part at all f k and h p give no working the rest make particular assumptions 
such as that there was no level road, that there were six miles of level road, and so on, all leading to particular times being fixed for reaching the hilltop. The most curious assumption is that of Agnes Bailey, who says, Let x equal the number of hours occupied in ascent, then x and a half equals the hours occupied in descent, and 4x over 3 equals the hours occupied on the level. I suppose you were thinking of the relative rates, uphill and on the level, which we might express by saying that, if they went x miles uphill in a certain time, they would go 4x over 3 miles on the level in the same time. You have, in fact, assumed that they took the same time on the level that they took in ascending the hill. Fifi assumes that, when the aged knight said they had gone four miles in the hour on the level, he meant that four miles was the distance gone, not merely the rate. This would have been, if Fifi will excuse the slang expression, a cell, ill-suited to the dignity of the hero. And now descend, ye classic nine, who have solved the whole problem, and let me sing your praises. Your names are Blythe, E. W., L. B., A Marlborough Boy, O. V. L., Putney Walker, Rose, Sea Breeze, Simple Susan, and Money Spinner. These last two I count as one, as they sent a joint answer. Rose and Simple Susan and Co. do not actually state that the hilltop was reached some time between six and seven, but, as they have clearly grasped the fact that a mile, ascended and descended, took the same time as two level miles, I mark them as right. A Marlborough boy and Putney Walker deserve honorable mention for their algebraical solutions being the only two who have perceived that the question leads to an indeterminate equation. E. W. brings a charge of untruthfulness against the aged knight, a serious charge, for he was the very pink of chivalry. She says, According to the data given, the time at the summit affords no clue to the total distance. It does not enable us to state precisely to an inch how much level and how much hill there was on the road. Fair damsel, the aged knight replies, if, as I surmise, thy initials denote early womanhood, bethink thee that the word enable is thine, not mine. I did but ask the time of reaching the hilltop as my condition for further parley. If now thou wilt not grant that I am a truth-loving man, then will I affirm that those same initials denote evenomed wickedness. Class list. First, a Marlborough boy, Putney Walker. Second, Blythe, E.W., L.B., O.V.L., Rose, Seabreeze, Simple Susan and Money Spinner. Blythe has made so ingenious an addition to the problem, and Simple Susan and Co. have solved it in such tuneful verse that I record both their answers in full. I have altered a word or two in Blythe's, which I trust she will excuse. It did not seem quite as clear as it stood. Yet stay, said the youth, as a gleam of inspiration lighted up the relaxing muscles of his quiescent features. Stay. Methinks it matters little when we reach that summit, the crown of our toil. For in the space of time wherein we clambered up one mile and bounded down the same on our return, we could have trudged the twain on the level. We have plodded, then, four and twenty miles in these six mortal hours, for never a moment did we stop for catching a fleeting breath or for gazing on the scene around. Very good, said the old man, twelve miles out and twelve miles in, and we reached the top some time between six and seven of the clock. Now mark me. For every five minutes that had fled since six of the clock when we stood on yonder peak, so many miles had we toiled upwards on the dreary mountain side. The youth moaned and rushed into the hostel. Blythe. The elder and the younger knight, they sallied forth at three. How far they went on level ground, it matters not to me. What time they reached the foot of hill when they began to mount are problems which I hold to be of very small account. 
the moment that each waved his hat upon the topmost peak to trivial queries such as this no answer will i seek yet can i tell the distance well they must have travelled o'er on hill and plain twixt three and nine the miles were twenty-four four miles an hour their steady pace along the level track three when they climbed but six when they came swiftly striding back adown the hill and little skill it needs methinks to show up hill and down together told four miles an hour they go for whether long or short the time upon the hill they spent two-thirds were passed in going up one-third in the descent two-thirds at three one-third at six if rightly reckoned o'er will make one hole at four the tale is tangled now no more simple susan money spinner end of chapter 11